So far I've been giving mostly historical proofs of the Swiss being responsible for wars and crimes against humanity and actual facts and video footage concerning Switzerland's violence, organized terror and hatred towards immigrants and other races. But there exists also scientific proofs that the Swiss are an entirely different species, nowhere else to be found in Europe. And I told you so. They are no Europeans and Switzerland is the base of Pharaoh. Me personally have never witnessed so much evil, so many organized lies of such utterly mean intensity as in Switzerland. And this is what makes people out, what they have in their heads. And let me tell you, what the Swiss have in their heads is so very different from the rest of humanity that I might call their inhibitions alien, in maybe more than one sense of the word. And the things we have in our minds are being confined by the skull, as in skull and bones, you might say. It's also the form and size of the skull that defines the size of the brain and its intellectual capacity, and even tendency for crimes can thus be predicted. And this is why Freemasons, who came out of the Templars who founded Switzerland, present the skull with square and compass for craniometry, because they know their skull and bones, I repeat, skull and bones, are different from ours. And this science of the human skull is called craniometry or cephalometry. And it has been discovered by science, doctors and professors, that the Swiss have skulls nowhere else to be found in Europe. This may be leading to the entirely different Swiss universe highly predestined for organized crime. So in this scientific research by Dr. Ripley from um, um, America, uh, it shows a cephalic index of Europe and of the world, which I'm going to show you later. Uh, and I'll put the link in the description, as I always do, so you can verify and examine the scientific analysis of the crani craniometrical map of Europe you yourselves. And you can see by this craniometri craniometry that the Swiss are neither Germans, French or Italians. Because Europeans don't fit these cranial characteristics, this is another species, either talking German, French or Italian. And there's even an official name for the Swiss skull called brachycephalic, cephalic meaning concerning the skull, which is being seen from above, a relatively short and quite round skull. Whereas the rest of the Europeans, seen from the top, have long skulls and not round, called dolicocephalic. So this one here, and I'm, kind of, I'm going to show you this on the uh, cephalic map of Europe in a moment. This is the Swiss uh, brachycephalic skull form, which is only be found in Switzerland in Europe. You're going to see that. This is European the dolicocephalic or long skulls, so long as being seen from the top, long from here to here. And this is quite short and broader, like here in the back. Well, we've seen aliens like this, haven't we? This is going deep, folks. You better copy it first, download it, because I've got a feeling the Swiss are going to delete it very, very quickly. And then it's gone. So here's a cephalic map, cephalic index of Europe. And here where it's black, you know, it's like a cancer in the middle of Europe, and it is a cancer. There's a high concentration of for Europe alien skull forms. Alien as they don't belong to Europe. You can see that. They're not here. They're not here, not even in the south, a little bit in Italy. Now, well, here's Rome, but here's a very high concentration, it says. Um, they're not from here, you can see it. Well, 
definitely not. The cephalic map of Europe shows a neat distinction starting right at the Swiss border where on both sides of the border around Switzerland the people have entirely different skulls exactly showing that in Switzerland there's an entirely different species with different skulls and what's inside these skulls. So you can read it again here of the cephalic index of Europe where it's black it means they're broad skulls and they're not European. So here this here is Switzerland here these are the borders here's France Germany uh, for Alberg where they are Swiss so you can see it stops right neat at the border you know here in France and here in Switzerland have a completely different skull form. It's like chopped off, you know, neat, clean cut at the border. Here. So, and these parts are Alsace here, where they replaced the original uh, population. As I told you, they're ethnic Swiss here, as in the north of Italy here, and in Austria, for Alberg. I'm a bit surprised it doesn't show black here in the south of Germany. Very surprised, but it is dark anyway. It's not like here, like the, the rest of Europe is white, long skulls. So here's, it's like a cancer in the middle of Europe and they behave like a cancer. They are the cancer of Europe. So well, ex except for those regions uh, of what I told you, the ethnic Swiss are living where Swiss replaced the original inhabitants during the Thirty Year War, when Swiss mercenaries perpetrated a total genocide on the original inhabitants of Alsace in eastern France, for Alberg in Austria, they call them the Xieberger, as they because they talk like in Switzerland, northern Italy and southern Germany, where they speak in fact Alemannic Swiss German today. And want to create that great Swiss empire, including that ethnic Swiss buffer zone, of which I've already told you all in some of my previous films. So here are the irrefutable scientific proofs of all I told you before, which even scientific craniometry double backs up. So if we look at the cephalic index of the world, you can clearly see that this is the place where the Swiss come from, here. Mongolians, Genghis Khan, and they got their little concentration here in the middle of Europe, in the Alps, uh, from a place called also Khazaria, the Khazars. Now this is where the Khazars went to in the middle of our beautiful Europe and destroying it bit by bit. And when I translate Khazar in Demotic Pharaonic, there's Ka, the living soul, and Sa, the king or pharaoh. So Khazar means soul king. Well, these black dudes were like that, who think that the, the pharaohs were black, the soul kings. <laughs> Meaning that these royal bloodline of Pharaoh is there. Their souls of kings are there. And they went to Switzerland, the base of all evil, where the Khazars went to and the Mongolians. And who are in fact of Pharaonic origin. I mean, how could the Mongolians organize anyway? They're never with Genghis Khan in such a way, you know. that They're, they're completely incapable by themselves to organize in such a way Genghis Khan did, so they they must have had another brain behind it, you know, and that's the that's pharaonic, and they, they also went they went to different places in the world, like Khazaria and Mongolia, so this is concerning the skulls, and this is very scientific. This is where the Swiss come from. This is why they don't want to belong to the European Community. And I tell you, they rule over the European community with their Templars. So, the skull forms, because they mix with the Mongolians, the Swiss did. 
concerning the uh, craniometry. I mean, it's there. These are solid proofs, eh? They're very, very solid. This is where they come from. This is where they came from. This is the original Swaziland. They're not European. It's a cancer, a black cancer. You can see that, a black cancer in the middle of our Europe, bringing two world wars, a 30-year war, killing everybody, etc., etc. And I, I tell you, I know how they are. There are no Europeans. I, I've, I've never experienced something alike. So I hear again in Wikipedia about craniometry here. If I scroll down, this is quite interesting. Some of you racists <laughs> might like this. But I tell you, it's wrong. So here it talks about the Jews and brachycephalic. So, yeah. So the only ones having the same skulls are the Jews. So the Swiss, in fact, have Jew skulls of the brachycephalic order. Now, how come the Swiss and the Jews share the same cephal cephalometry? Whereas the Swiss have always terrorized and chased the Jews, forcing them to live in the two villages of Endingen and Langnau, which I've already shown you in my other video, right at the German border, only forcing them to wear the yellow Jew hat in the Middle Ages and other Nazi-like Swiss measures. Well, why? Well, this is the Pharaonic link. So I filmed it in this video here uh, two years ago um, when I went filming in those two Jew villages, Lengnau and Endingen, and the Jews finally disappeared entirely from Switzerland as they were completely terrorized. So in spite of the fact they have the same skull form, they don't have the same thing in their heads. And this is what the Swiss uh, forced them to wear in the Middle Ages, this round yellow thing like the yellow star, and a yellow Jew hat. So they finally got fed up with it and left. But why? still, why do they have the same skull form? Oh, I'm going to explain it to you now. The Jews were 410 years prisoner of Pharaoh, had their women raped by Pharaoh, and the Swiss had their women raped by the aristocracy through the Prime Noctis, uh, or the Lord's first right or also, you might say, the first night, thus massively spreading Pharaoh's genetics in Pharaoh's base, Switzerland, and they were raised by Pharaoh, as I've already told you so. So here's another particularity of the Swiss um, crano craniometry. It says Alpine. This is the Alpine skull form which is brachycephalic. But if you look at the rear of the head, there's another difference. Uh, this is Nordic, you know, this is bump here, or Mediterranean, it's the same, or Atlantic. Here's nothing, it just goes straight over into the neck, you know, which is the same in the East Baltic, where you're going to, you go to the Khazar region. So, it's only Alpine in, in, in Central Western Europe. It's only Alpine having this, together with the brachycephalic skull form. You, know, you remember the black cancer in the middle of Europe. So maybe, so nowhere else this particular brachycephalic head form can be found in Europe, except Switzerland and the ethnic Swiss parts. The Swiss are definitely not what we think they are. They are no real Europeans, and maybe even something completely else. As I've witnessed on many occasions in Switzerland, that they seem to understand each other without talking and just through the look of an eye. They always seem to stare at people as if they see right through and detect something they don't like. And there are many things they don't like in Switzerland on which they use their laws of silence, organizing through some creepy look of the eye among themselves. 
The biggest races in the world are in fact illegal immigrants themselves in our Europe, hiding on top of the mountain with, their all, with all their loaded gold and their Swiss short heads. Alan Dulles is the man behind the CIA and considered to be the one who founded the Central Intelligence Agency. And he not only lived in Bern, Switzerland for many, many years, but he's also of Swiss descent of the patrician Malay family of Geneva, the gene of Eve, Geneva. And here you can see the cloak and dagger and the Swiss laws of silence smiling through their teeth. Now this uh, is very interesting. It's the EIR, the Executive Intelligence Review from uh, July 5th, 1983. And if I scroll it down, well, I do it slowly so you can punch pause and read the whole thing yourselves. There's a lot more in it. You know, I just show you a couple of things. Only the things here concerning uh, Alan Dulles in Switzerland. And uh, I put it anyway. I put I put it in the links for you in the in the description underneath the video, so you can all look it up yourself. And here it says, um, Alan Dulles. He arrived in Switzerland in 1942, and he was there in 1917, meeting with uh, Lenin. They, they were he was friends with Lenin. You see, the guy who killed all the Russians. And only the poor Russians, the people, you know, the, the, the army deserters and farmers. He was together in bed with Nazi supporters. And so this is, you know, Octagon, Swiss, Swiss, the Swiss Huns. And here he was in the, in the uh, he, um, he represented IG Farben. Uh, I'll come back to that later. He was in bed with all the Nazis, this, this guy here, uh, who became the, the first you know, a civil director of the, uh, of the CIA. Yeah, here it says, Dulles, whose family was related to the Geneva patrician family of the Malay, uh, had been with brother John Foster. So he's Swiss, his ancestors are Swiss. They're all Swiss. Every time it's Swiss, Swiss, Swiss. The Huns have taken over with their broad skulls, non-European. So you can read the whole article. So this is the um, Executive Intelligence Report. So here it says too in another book, I put it all in the links for you, that the Geneva headquarters of the CIA and the OSS was run by the Malay Prévost family whose descendants include Alan Dulles of the CIA. There you go. CIA is Swiss. They took the head of it and they let only Swisses in on all key positions. Here's some more. In 1921 Alan Dulles was posted to Bern, Switzerland by his uncle Secretary Lansing where he took over the role of Chief of Intelligence in the American le le Legation. In Switzerland, Dolls was met by his cousins, you know, they're all cousins, members of the Malay family. Dolls' uncle, Petit Doll, had married the Swiss-American Julia Malay Prévost. Both the Prévost and the Mallets were uniquely powerful families in international politics and finance, holding hereditary seats in the Council of 200, ruling Geneva, Switzerland. This group with the British royals formed a joint committee of spy masters working for the aristocracy that went back to at least the 18th century. The Malais Prévost were also responsible for injecting the Scottish Rite of Masonry into the United States. By the mid-1920s, Dull, his name was not Dulles, but Dull, was tapped to be the first secretary of the American Embassy in Berlin. Dull was also a director of the Schroeder Bank, well that's Schroeder, that handled Hitler's personal funds. 
In June 1920, American Army Captain Truman Smith was brought into the Bullen mission as a military observer. In 1922, after Mussolini, in the pay of British intelligence, had taken over Italy, etc., etc. Well, this guy is Swiss, you know, and they're not French, you know, these names are French, but they, they have all brachycephalic Hans heads from Geneva all the way up to Basel, all the way down again to Tessin. They're not Italian, French or German. They are a completely different species, as I already told you, and they're everywhere. They have taken over all key positions. And here's some more. Here it says how they are. Well, I just can't see that. So Alan Dulles and the CIA, its Office of Scientific Intelligence, positioned to research, mind manipulation and the use of drugs in such matters. Even though the CIA was clearly behind many of the mind control programs, you know, like um, uh, the Monarch and the uh, MK Ultra, and, and just remember the latest attack on the on the beach is also connected again to Switzerland. Uh, see my films about how they uh, manipulated uh, the, um, how they provoked the Tunisians by uh, throwing down their national hero, you know, and it came out six days before the uh, the attacks, and this guy was on drugs again, just like the Germans with the, uh, uh, with their um, amphetamines and and every time it's drugs and you know Switzerland. And here, in the same time, during the war, there was a British ambassador, uh, yeah, well, probably to Switzerland, and his name was here, British ambassador Victor Mallet, of the same family of uh, the CIA dolls. It's all Switzerland, Switzerland, Switzerland. Swiss, Swiss, Swiss. Uh, Alan Dulles, or I'd rather say Alain Dull, he was a lawyer, as many of these men on powerful positions usually are. And he worked already at the U.S. Embassy in Bern in 1917, where he got friends with Vladimir Lenin, who also spent many, many years in Switzerland before they let him loose on the Russian people, killing millions during the Red Terror, mostly murdering Russian peasants and army deserters. These good Russian men opposed to war and against those pharaonic tsars from Tsar, meaning a king in demotic pharaonic as in a Tsar, coffages, a box to put the king in when he's dead. So here you can see the house where Lenin lived in Bern, which is in the um, uh, Seiden, Seidenweg 8, uh, number 8. And this is where... Alan Dulles came in all the time, you know, as he was living just around the corner in the Herngasse, number 23. I could have looked, go, gone and have a, a, you know, videotape it all for you because this house still exists. But as I can't go out of the door, you know, I haven't been out for, for weeks now uh, because of the Swiss um, terror and their... And their police lying things together and all that well you know about that so here's the entire article I can I can scroll it down here for you and uh, I put in the links for you anyway so well I put the rest of the links so Lenin and dolls you know they were friends Seeing each other all the time, having a beer in Bern, Switzerland. Switzerland, Switzerland, Switzerland. And during World War II, Alan Dulles lived in the Herngasse 23, 23, in Bern, Switzerland, just around the corner from Mr. Lenin. Being the Swiss Director of the Office of Strategic Services, the OSS, again, SS in it, as most of his pals were and predecessor of the CIA, where he had mostly Nazi friends from Octagon and meeting many German Nazi officers. And it was of course also the OSS and uh, Alan Dulles of the Swiss, you know, like the, you know, the Swiss Red Cross and all that. 
that had all these guys come to the U.S., you know, and give them a post to this C in the CIA. They all came into the CIA. All these. This is what happened. Alan Dahl, Switzerland, with their broad skulls. Non-European. So this is yeah, Alan Dulles on Wikipedia. There he is. He looks so innocent, you know, as the Swiss always do. But oh dear, be careful. So here I scroll down here. Early career, yeah, early career. So and as a lawyer, he also worked for the Schroeder Bank and represented I.G. Farben in America. Uh, the ones who produced Zyklin B to eliminate all the Jews and their children, of which Swissy Alan Dulles was part of the whole genocidal construction by the Huns of the Alps, with their Central Asian brachycephalic head forms and non-European Hun skulls. Every time Switzerland is involved in all these crimes against humanity, and they occupy all key positions, every time Switzerland, Switzerland, Switzerland. So here it says... Um, Zyklin B. There you go. He also handled IG Farben's litigation up until 1942. IG Farben was a large company in Nazi Germany, notorious known for producing Zyklin B gas used to kill Jews in the concentration camps. So, I mean... What is this so-called American doing for a Nazi company producing poisons for a genocide? Well, he was not American. He was Swiss. It was Malay. And the Swiss were on both sides, you know, in the US, in England, and of course they financed the Nazis and all that. And they got filthy, filthy rich. Here it says, Herngasse 23. That's where he lived, just around the corner from, well, there's a lot from Lenin. So there's a lot more to read here. I'll put in the links for you as well. There you go, another Swissy who got through the Operation Paperclip, got them all into the US. That's what, what I've been telling you. All these black people being randomly shut down today in America's street. Well, it's Octagon. There are one million Swiss Americans actually at the moment in the US and they've taken over all key positions and they're going to do the same thing as they've done in Nazi Germany to the Germans and you could see by the head forms the Germans are not the same. I put the link of this article of a guy who's living in an American living in Switzerland and apparently he read my uh, he saw my videos as well so I put the entire link in the descriptions. So you can read yourself the 10 reasons why Switzerland is home to the CIA. Or at least the 10 reasons of this American guy in Zurich. Uh, who's not so fond of Switzerland either, apparently. And I told you so in one of my previous films that had been, it has been deleted now. Uh, the, the title of my film was Octagon Rules Over Pentagon. And it's so true. It's 100% true. That Octagon rules over Pentagon. Then, after the war, which was a great success for the Swiss and their Alan Dulles, he became the first civil director of the CIA from 1953 to 1961. A Swiss, he had the head of the CIA on the Swiss sleeper agent Eisenhower and with Swiss gay Edgar on top of the FBI, Swiss everywhere, and bye-bye America. So you can understand that Swiss Alan Dulles only lets Swissies in on all CIA's key positions. Same for the FBI and under Eisenhower. That's why Alan Dulles' brother, John Foster Dulles, becoming Secretary of State during the Eisenhower administration. The Huns are in all key positions now. Well, let's have the Cold War really start now and bomb the hell out of the North Koreans and the Vietnamese using biological warfare and both people on both peoples like Agent Orange. While showing the sound of money, oh, I'm sorry, the sound of music and picture of that clean and innocent Alps to the American public. 
while the Huns taking over the Per Het, the real demotic name of the White House. So here you can see Alan Dulles with his lovely innocent Swiss smile together with JFK. Well he was thinking something else didn't he now, eh? Like here, title of a book here. Well I didn't read it but I, I know what happened. And it was John F. Kennedy who finally fired Alan Dulles and had to pay the, um, the ultimate price with all Octagon's men and all military and intelligence key positions for the Huns a piece of cake to wipe him out and cover it up with Alan Dulles in the Warren Commission and back in the saddle riding the United States of America. The biggest Jew killer of all times was an ethnic Swiss by the name of SS Sturmbahnführer Christian Wert, nicknamed Christian the Terrible, who was the chief inspector of Operation Reinhard or Aktion Reinhard, named after SS Obergruppenführer General Reinhard Heydrich, the Nazi High Commissioner of Bohemia and Moravia in Eastern Europe and head of the Gestapo, the German secret state police, with the Octagon badge. So here is the Gestapo Octagon badge of the Swiss Nazi Templars. You see it's octagonal. It's all, all police, secret services, military, it's all Octagon, the military wing of the, uh, the Swiss Nazi Templars, or Pharaoh actually. So here you can see him with his wife, um, Reinhard Heydrich, the one Operation Reinhard was called after. And Heydrich's wife, Lina Mathilde von Osten, was a member of the aristocracy. And as in all humanities wars, the aristocracy and Pharaoh's descendants have ordered all wars for the Horus Matrix, including World War II where the aristocracy was deeply involved to organize the manslaughter with the help of Swiss collaboration of the Octagon. So here it says, Lina Mathilde Heydrich von Osten, the daughter of a minor German aristocrat, etc. etc. Um, together with the Swiss, they always have their fingers in it. So... See, they are a little castle here. Well, charming, isn't it? Operation Reinhard was financed by the Swiss with 1 million Swiss francs and took place from October 1941 to November 1943. And the operation was confirmed during the Avanze Conference on January 20th, uh, 1942. So the Operation Reinhardt started a few months after the Barbarossa attack on Russia of June 22nd, 1941, which was financed by Switzerland with 1 billion Swiss francs. And so was, of course, then the Operation Reinhardt the uh, murder on all the uh, on all the Jews. So this is a Swiss border control here. Um, it says, uh, Mr. Hitler, he guaranteed the Swiss neutrality of 1937. I put it through the uh, the Google Translator now, and this is on the on the German television, WDR. Westdeutsche Rundfunk. So this is not just anything, you know, this is official. <clears throat> you can read it all yourself. Uh, like here it says, so Hitler got in 1941 uh, 1 billion Swiss francs for the Russia, Russia campaign and the murder of all the Jews through the operation Reinhard executed by the Swiss Christian the Terrible Christian Wert 
an ethnic Swiss. <clears throat> I'll put it in the descriptions for you. So this is quite recent, 2012. The Swiss are the ones behind World War II, together with the, uh, with the aristocracy. Swissy Christian the Terrible was born in Oberbaldsheim in Baden-Württemberg, in the south of Germany, next to the Swiss border, near to Günzburg, where Dr. Mengele was from, and near to where Julius Streicher was from. And all these men were ethnic Swiss, as I've shown you in my other films. So here you can see it. Um, here we click on, this is where he's from, Oba Baldsheim. And actually here it says, his nickname was Christian the Terrible, the Wild Christian, Operation Reinhard, Ac uh, Action T4. And he was the first commandant of the Belzec extermination camp. A uh, charming fella, this, this Swissy. He looks a bit like the neighbor who just aggressed me. That was uh, yesterday, I just got aggressed by uh, some Swiss Nazi neighbor. Oh, I videotaped him. So here, Ober Baldheim, he was born... Uh, about four years before Mr. Hitler was born. He was born in 1889. So, from the same uh, era. <clears throat> so here we see Oba Baltheim here, also in Wikipedia. <laughs> Excuse me. Here it says Baltheim or Oba Baltheim. And uh, here's Switzerland. Here's the border. And this is all part of the Swiss buffer zone, which I'll explain to you uh, one more time in a minute. Yeah, Baden-Württemberg, these are the Alemannic people. They are basically Swiss, you know. And here was Günzburg, Dr. Mengele, here was Julius Streicher, uh, uh, Himmler, no, here was Mr. Himmler. They all came from the south of Germany, and if they came from the north, you know, that's the uh, Teutonic Knights link, who are also Swiss Germans, who uh, after the Templars uh, find and, um, uh, founded Switzerland. So just look my film, uh, the Teutonic Knights, Deutsch Ritter on. In fact, every single high place Nazi was either Swiss as the Reich's Health Minister, SS Obergruppenführer, Dr. Leonardo Conti, and the boss of Operation T4, Tiergarten 4, <clears throat> SS Standartenführer Karl Jäger, the head of the murderous Einsatzgruppen, born in Schaffhausen, Dr. Ernst Rüden, Hitler's mastermind, born in St. Gallen, um, and the boss, um, and also Christian Wert, his boss on the medical level, like Heinrich Himmler, the military boss of all the concentration camps as head of the SS, and also an ethnic Swiss. And also Hitler, a Swiss sleeper agent, was financed by the Swiss, and the Swiss general Ulrich Wehler, etc., etc., I documented quite a few of these guys in this video here, Auschwitz made in Switzerland on this channel, Gure. It says a Swiss, the Swiss in the service of the SS. And um, they were all Swiss. The Second World War, the Nazis, the genocide, also the genocide of Europe. You know, Europe is like gone afterwards, you know. Uh, it was all a Swiss uh, operation. It's... They organized it, they financed it, they protected the Nazis after the war, etc. Just go and watch this video. Uh, you can see it on Google Maps. Here's Gunsborg, Mengele, Julius Streicher is also from around here. Uh, I showed it in another video, um, uh, Switzerland financed the Shoah. And here's Baldheim, uh, the uh, 
Christian the Terrible. In Switzerland, it's, it's very, very near to Switzerland. Which you can see here in the bigger picture. Um, so here was, um, yeah. So here's Zurich, here's Switzerland, here's Oberbaltheim, here's Gunzburg. And this is all, they are ethnic Swiss all around here. They are practically Swiss, they are Swiss. All the, these bad evil Nazis, uh, the head of them, they were all Swiss, believe me. So all these high-ranked Nazi criminals, they were all Swiss, including Christian the Terrible, here the biggest Jew killer of all times, with the lives of around 2 million men, women and children on his account. Um, and here it says, uh, Christian Wert, one assigned to Hartheim. And I'll show you what Hartheim is. So here's Hartheim, again a castle, so it's again the aristocracy. In all these euthanasia centers, as they call it here, of the Action T4 Tiergarten 4, um, they did a lot of these things in, uh, in ancient castles. And there was another one where uh, Christian Wert also uh, worked. And the head of it all was the Swiss uh, Health uh, Reichs Minister, Dr. Leonardo Conte, called the Swiss Sadist. So the Swiss Sadist, together with Christian the Terrible, there was the infernal Swiss duo, and together with many, many other Swiss. So here, Christian the Terrible in Wikipedia, where they... Uh, you know, here yeah, in Baden-Württemberg, Oberbaltheim, next to the, uh, here, yeah, next to the Swiss border. And, uh, Aktion T4. Aktion Reinhardt. So, in here there are some, uh, SS men, uh, witnesses, you know, giving their testimonies. And this one is Franz. Sushomel. So here's his witness account. And he's saying in his testimony, SS Unterscharführer Franz Sushomel said about Wert From my activity in the camps of Treblinka and Sobibor, I remember that Wert, in brutality, meanness, and ruthlessness, could not be surpassed. Oh, that's typical Swiss, eh? We therefore called him Christian the Terrible, or Wild Christian, and the Ukrainian guardsmen called him Stuka, the, the, the German Nazi war bomber. The brutality of Wert was so great that I personally see it as a perversity. You know, even the Germans are shocked by this Swissy. I remember particularly uh, that on each occasion, Wert lashed Ukrainian guardsmen with the whip. If only someone had had the courage to kill Christian Wert, then Aktion Reinhardt would have collapsed. Berlin would not have found another man with such energy for evil and nastiness. First, the witness account of an SS corporal named Franz Suchomel and filmed uh, by a French uh, team in the 70s and he was from the uh, he was an SS guard from the concentration death camp Sobibor and Treblinka where Swissy Wert came all the time it says he says uh, that Wert had built the death camp and uh, Wert he, he was uh, practic practically all over as the chief inspector of all the death camps and he was the first concentration camp commandant of the Belzec extermination camp. So here we can see that even the German SS were shocked and appalled by Wert's cruelty. 
because only a Swiss and a Horus product of the Sisters of Isis can be so inhumane sadistic. It's completely schizophrenic that the children and the wives of those sadist SS camp commandants always say, Oh, my daddy was so sweet with us. This means that the wife at home and sister of Isis had total control over the beast, because they have done something terrible with him as a child or baby, to make him so and split his personality. The famous child psychologist Alice Miller said that Switzerland is one of the most dangerous places for a child. And she's right about that. Alice Miller describes the laws of silence in Switzerland of which I've been telling you. So there it is of that same book I just showed you. And she's also talking about Switzerland because she lived in Switzerland. She wasn't Swiss, she was Polish and she got very well known in the US. So here she's talking about Switzerland. Yeah. And she's also talking about the camp commandant Nazi war criminals. And, um, but she didn't know that they were all Swiss and she was so near. Yeah. So I hope to add that to the, uh, yeah. and there's really the, uh, the laws of silence in Switzerland here, you know, uh, on crimes against children, you know, to split their personality so the sisters of Isis can use them. Yeah, it says all the atrocities going on here in Switzerland. And the Swiss, of course, would never write it, you know. And if it's, if there is a, a Swiss who would, who would write it, you know, you go to him into prison. Because these laws of silence are not to be broken. Well, and later on, she um, she went to uh, she went to France. It says she's talking about Adolf Hitler as well, you know. And uh, yeah, Switzerland. And yes, he's saying it again. Why did almost all the journals to whom these devastating reports were sent, journals whose main concern is with society, choose to respond with silence? Who is protecting whom and from what? She's asking these questions, right? Well, I've got the answer for you. Why shouldn't the Swiss public be informed that in its fair land Countless children are being subjected to a lonely martyrdom. What's achieved by silence? So this, you know, etc., etc. So this lady who's supposed to give a lot of answers as being a, uh, a child psychologist, she can't give these answers. Um, and this is very honest, actually. She, this is very honest of her. So I'm giving you the answers here and in my other videos. And this is also the reason for which the Swiss, they had children slaves until 1989. Die Kinder, or the uh, uh, contract kids. There are a couple of films about it. And they had um, uh, eugenics programs until 1996, just around the corner from where we are where they sterilized uh, young people by force. Uh, it's almost in the 20, until the 21st century. And it's still going on today, all these things here. Because the Swiss, you know, and these children slaves, the Vadenkina, they were broken. They broke them. They raped them. They beat them to death. They starved them to death. Uh, they were beaten all the time. And... Um, so this is a way, you know, to split their personalities because the Swiss and the Sisters of Isis, they, all, they, all, they always have to have an amount of uh, split personalities uh, to make their Nazi war criminals um, have them ready. And they're still doing it, you know, today. And uh, so this honest woman, Alice Miller, a great, a very famous child psychologist living in Switzerland, She's asking all these questions here. And um, 
So I'm giving the answer now here. And she's also, you know, on the track of um, uh, analyzing uh, the, the young lives and the, uh, uh, when they were still children of all these uh, schizophrenic camp commandants. Uh, whose children and wives say, well, uh, my daddy was such a nice man, you know, that's completely schizophrenic. And this means in their youth, when they were a baby, the sisters of Isis, they split their personality. And this is what they do actually with the MK Ultra or the, uh, the artichoke program of brainwashing. Somebody is tortured, you know, and like tied upon a, um, uh, on a bench. Of course, it hurts a lot, and so you want to escape, you want to run, but you can't run because you're tied up like Jesus on a cross. So you escape in your mind, you know, and, and a whole new um, a personality is being opened. And so this is how they split these personalities. And the old personality, the original personality is completely put aside. It pops up, you know, like with these uh, schizophrenic camp commandants or my Swiss policeman, the Hans Rudolf Kuni, another schizophrenic psychopath, you know, and a, uh, a product of the Sisters of Isis, of whom I'm not allowed to talk, you know. They say, well, you go to prison if you talk about this guy. So these are the walls of silence, the laws of silence of Switzerland of which also uh, Alice Miller is talking here about and what you can all witness here in, um, in the um, absolute Swiss terror on me and my family. This is the center of evil folks, it really is. So dear, very much respected Alice Miller, you were absolutely on the right track and um, I just answered some of your questions and I do so here in my videos and so maybe you've got some followers who um, who can see this and um, we have to do something about this evil we have to stop it yeah, one of the instruments to uh, split a child's mind is of course uh, Ritalin here it is which is very much abused in Switzerland and um, well, I just told you the reason why so they can be productive um, obedient servants for the sisters of Isis in, uh, in the coming uh, uh, crimes against humanity believe me it's all Swiss led even Alice Miller had her doubts, you know, she was on the path, on the right track. I mean, how else can a witch kill a man who's naturally much stronger than she is? Well, either with poison to play the men or to play the men out against each other, or have her own personal schizophrenic little Nazi monster to perform at her will. Just as that violent Swiss cop Hans Rudolf Kuni, who was so sweet at home, but on the job, aggressing people like me and my family, lying things together, hitting people, and very similar to those Swiss Nazi camp commandants. And this is so typically Swiss, who can behave so innocent and neutral, only to behave like the worst possible predator at another time and place, the absolutely schizophrenic and split personalities. So, our Swiss Christian Wert, Christian the Terrible, was also a policeman. And the very thing Swissy loves to do. Now taken over, the US police gunning down black people at sight, with currently one million Swiss Americans on all key positions in the USA. And in fact, the entire European police force of all occupied territories collaborated with the Nazis. <laughs> Apparently a police speciality. And they're all Swiss sleep agents, I tell you. This is Octogon. Watch this video. The entire international blue army against humanity is Swiss 
Nazi Templar Octogon with a lot of split personalities and schizophrenic psychopaths, you know, killing people and terrorizing people, etc. And when the Nazis come, they all collaborate with them. A bunch of incredible cowards. The Swiss Wirt's first mass murder job was in Grafenegg Castle of the always involved aristocracy again and located in Gomading, very near to the Swiss border in ethnic Swiss territory where he gassed, where he gassed people for the T4 operation for his Swiss boss, the SS Reichsminister nicknamed the Swiss sadist Dr. Leonardo Conte. The name of the castle, Gravenegg, refers to the word Graf, a count, and Eck meaning a canton in Latin or place where the counts are to be found. Gravenegg. So here you can see it's a castle here. Again. Yeah. And um, here it says the, uh, the Dukes of. Uh, uh, it was in Gomading, and if we click on it, um, so they were the Dukes of, here it says, the Dukes of Württemberg, in Baden-Württemberg, you see. So if I click on Gomading, there, so it's all the way down in the south of Germany, here. And here was Gunzburg, and uh, all the other places I showed you, it, it's all... In Swissy country it is, and I saw this too at some. Uh, I showed it before at the Ernst Rudin uh, film. Uh, th this very same thing in in some um, a coat of arms of some Swiss uh, aristocrats in my film about Ernst Rudin, if I remember that well. So here's Switzerland. Huh? So this is all the Swiss buffer zone. I'll explain that to you. And it says again, the uh, even if you put Goma Ding in it, you know, in, in the uh, Wikipedia, it says immediately Gravenek Euthanasia Center. It's so famous, you know. <laughs> I've already explained in my other films like Auschwitz Made in Switzerland and several other videos what exactly is an ethnic Swiss. But I'll do a short re-explanation for the ones who have not seen the specific documentaries concerning the issue yet. So here is Switzerland and here is the entire big uh, Swiss empire, like this, uh, with the buffer zone uh, with it. This is Alemannic, this is Elsass, this is Baden-Württemberg, Bavaria, with Gunz Gunzburg here. Uh, with a big chunk of Bavaria is Alemannic, for Alberg here is Alemannic and here in Italy uh, they are the richest part of, of Europe it, this, they are all Swiss living here um, the Swiss are an Alemannic tribe mixed with Pharaoh due to the aristocratic Prime Noctis the first right, and around Switzerland they have an Alemannic buffer zone for full protection of the motherland, also called the Alpenfestung. There is the Alemannic south of Germany called Baden-Württemberg and the adjacent parts of Bavaria, the northeast of France called Alsace, the west of Austria called Vorarlberg, and the north of Italy, which are in fact parts of Switzerland inside Germany, France, Austria and Italy entirely surrounding Switzerland as a first ring of defense, which was, and still is, a very strong strategic principle, defending the base of all evil in the Alps, Octogon. So here you can see it all around, you know. And they want to create the big Swiss empire, which it, in fact, has already been all this time. Therefore, the regions in the buffer zone are by far the, the richest provinces in Germany, France, Austria and Italy, at an almost Swiss level of accumu accumulated wealth 
and a surplus of employment opportunities. How was the buffer zone constructed? Switzerland was founded by the Templars in 1291. See videos The Pharaoh Show and The Teutonic Knights, Deutsch Ritter on. And since that moment, the whole of Europe got ransacked by hundreds of thousands of, of the horrendous Swiss mercenaries as the, at the time, huge Pope Swiss Guard burning good European women at the stakes and creating Lebensraum, or living space, for the Swiss buffer zone. Just like the Einsatzgruppen did in the Second World War creating living space, a buffer, a uh, Lebensraum. So, you know, for those people who don't like the Jews and say, you know, well, I don't care what happened to them. Uh, here you can see, I mean, the Swiss has, have done the same thing to the Europeans. So maybe in this respect you care. And they did the same thing to the Germans and in France, all over. So maybe now you care, because they, because they did it to us as well, you see? And they're going to do it again. Now they're going to do it against the Americans. And especially during the Thirty Year War from 1618 to 1648, hundreds of thousands of Swiss mercenaries crawled over Europe, just like the Einsatzgruppen of World War II and literally emptying entire regions like 95% of the Alsatian population murdered and replaced by Swissy and about two-thirds of the entire German population 20 million Germans and their children eradicated for the Swiss buffer zone creating a nest for the future Nazi war criminals by the Horus Matrix of the Sisters of Isis who all came out of Switzerland or the Swiss buffer zone like the Swiss Christian the Terrible responsible for two million exterminated Jews and their children just as Swiss he did before with the Europeans exterminating them by the millions so you can see the rest of the article of that German newspaper this is what's going on now this is very important to understand. Very, very important. That these people actually who want to join Switzerland now, that they are Swiss. Only last year, 2014, they even discussed the possibility of a huge Swiss empire, including all the ethnic Swiss. Well, why else, why else, including the buffer zone around Switzerland, if they weren't Swiss like the rest of these thugs? Believe me, folks, it's not the Jews being the enemy within. It's only those of pharaonic aristocratic origin like Kissinger, Sarkozy, Larry Silverstein, who are in fact the false Jews described in the Bible. See my video, Pharistocracy. And it's those Swiss Nazi Templars, their octagon military wing, now having taken over the USA through Operation Paperclip, gunning down black people in the streets, hoping for a black versus white escalation. See my video, Swiss sleeper agents in USA. And uh, so I show you, this was in Die Zeit, a German magazine last year about the great Swiss Empire being created right now. So I put I, I ran this through the Google Translator. It's not it's a it's weird English. I myself am not a Jew as Swiss disinfo agents are spreading their disinfo and lies about me. And I ain't so neither by blood nor by religion. And I would tell you so if I was. I just don't want you to miss out the real enemy of mankind, which would be absolutely fatal at this stage under the current critical situation. I'm just a tiny South African historian with a Viking name, meaning a horse for Hras, 
my last name, still in use in today's Icelandic. Behold the wrath of the Viking ancestors, Swissy, you traitor of the European race. Defining the enemy through historical similarities, eliminating the unknown factor in a mathematical way. And I will tell you exactly what ISIS Islamic State is. The whole world and every government is ruled by Pharaoh who installed their base in the Alps, Switzerland, through the Prime Noctis or gangbang rape by the aristocracy. Pharaoh's aristocracy, that is. Then, all over Europe they had easy play because of the all over white race appearance of the Swiss and the European victims. But how do you install a white pharaonic Swiss over a black population in Africa without ar arousing suspicion and revolts. Well, at first the white pharaonic colonizers ruled over black Africa. Then they mixed with the black people making little brown children, of whom the brown girls, who were raised in a white way, later on mixed with black men, again making much blacker babies, but totally white inside being in fact the superior class of white negroes, black in outside, white inside, to rule over Africa, which Pharaoh had already done the same with the Europeans. And since Octogon has been waging war against Islam since the first Gulf War of 1991 at least, which is 24 years, the time of one generation, of ISIS leaders produced with all these Arab women kidnapped and gone missing in Iraq, being used for the livestock, creating Arab looking white inside ISIS leaders, just as the Nazis had their Lebensbahn baby factories and the Taliban in Afghanistan, suddenly popped up after 22 years of war from 1979 to 2001 enough time for one generation of Taliban killers or the Nazis from 1918 to 1939 having 21 years and again one generation for the Hitler Youth and the SS killers. It's all the, si the same every time. And when writing Isis, the goddess in Demotic Pharaonic the Egyptians only used consonants like in Hebrew or Arabic, thus making at the Nazi SS standing for ISIS, huh? only the consonants SS. An SS with Freemason skull and bones, thus Germans fighting for Pharaoh and their base in the Alps. With Nazi SS for ISIS and Islamic State for ISIS and the Horus Matrix. Isis again and always Isis, Isis, like Suisse Sœur d'Isis, the sisters of Isis, of the Alps. Isis now is the same, who tried to attract young and honest Muslim men from Europe and elsewhere to take their orders and do the fighting, assassinations and terror attacks for them. And Isis, the Taliban, and the Nazis are one and the same thing, bred out of the same pharaonic Horus Matrix livestock technique, with their base Octogon, Switzerland, where all the money flows down the mountains like rivers of gold into the chosen directions. Let's have a look at the logo of the Swiss telecommunications in the base of Pharaoh. First of all, the company is a real conglomerate, immense powerful with a surplus of wealth and finance, making them possible to speculate and invest worldwide, uh, just as a Swiss bank. And they probably belong to the Swiss Templar banks, the Swiss Nazi Templar banks, to whom in fact all banks worldwide belong to, as they were the first banks at all when Octogon of the Alps got founded on August 1st, 1291, and the Templar's treasure came to the safety of the red and white United Kingdom of Pharaoh. And then, 
They went viral and expanded worldwide. And in that Swisscom logo, there are the three colors of the three crowns. The white royal house of Perhat of Upper Egypt in the middle, and the red house of Per Tasser of Lower Egypt around, and showing the same waves as on the crowns themselves. So there's absolutely no doubt about that. As Switzerland is Pharaoh's base anyway, you know. So here, even the waves here, you see on the red crown here, the uh, of the Pertasser, or the also called the Red House, like a red royal house, which I explain in this video here on my other channel. Even these waves here are, are you can find them in the Swisscom logo, and it's being seen from the top. You see from here, so it's the red around and the white in the middle. You know. And then it also, and this is the uh, the White House, as as the White House in the United States. This is where the White House is from, actually. It's all pharaonic, you know. And the White House, that's um, uh, Ek Echnaton, you know. If you look at the Obama, well, he looks like Echnaton. Well, that, that's in the south. That's Upper Egypt in the south of Egypt. And there were two kingdoms, and they, you know, they had strife amongst each other, and they just got together, and they made the United Kingdom, and out of that, the two colors of the Swiss flag. Well, I show it all in this video, and then in the Swisscom logo, there's the war crown, you know, showing uh, um, face down. All the elements are there, and I'll explain it to you. So here you can see it. the red and the white crown is seen from above and um, the white crown in the middle, even these waves are in it which you can see on the, on the red crown and here is the blue crown which is uh, facing down, the war crown. So white and red are shown from the top of the crowns and blue shows the blue war crown from the side facing down. Then why that blue war crown in an apparent peaceful affair of telecommunications? Well, I learned in military school that the two most important things in an army and in a war are logistics and even more the signalers. Called the signal corps in the US Army. Or the Royal Corps of Signals in the British Army. Because without proper signalers or today's telecommunications, the chain of command can't pass down Pharaoh's order. Like in that pharaonic red and white chessboard without the hand connecting the brain with the pieces. This is how in history small armies defeated huge armies ten times as big because it's better to have twice the signaler power and half the gun power than the other way around and for logistics the same thing. Being also the very reason that the Germans lost the Battle of Stalingrad because they merely replaced proper logistics with pillaging and stealing from the local population what could be found to eat. Which is called in proper terms a parasite army. Well no wonder, because the Swiss were in command with their 17th century 30 year war mercenary tradition and apparent experience commanding Hitler, who never listened to his own generals because he got his orders from the Swiss generals. Only modern armies don't work that way anymore, eh, Swissy? Even with your Swiss Blitzkrieg. Soldiers need chow, otherwise they stick their hands up when smelling the enemy's kitchen down the lines. This is, in fact, in military terms concerning the setup of an army only, the biggest difference between the American army of World War II and the German Nazi army. The Americans brought food and logistics to their own soldiers, and even to their enemies when defeated. 
whereas the Germans under Swiss Octogon command just robbed it where they could, leaving starvation to millions, even stealing the milk for the babies. Wasting all their logistics on Holocaust trains and bringing gold and art collections into the motherland in the Alps instead of feeding their own soldiers. But this was all planned by the Swiss mastermind and their Templar Octogon idea of Middle Age warfare based upon pillaging armies. And for proper logistics you need an excellent signal corps. Therefore Pharaoh's blue war crown in the Swisscom logo. Here you can even see the, um, the Templar's coat of arms a bit simplified. It is a coat of arms. You can all see it. There's neither strategy nor tactical retreats if you have no proper signal core. I mean, what's a microscopic virus without that incredible fast intel of where to attack and destroy an entire organism billions of times bigger? And neither you want your own military company destroyed by your own friendly fire, which in army slang we call a blue on blue. Well, why blue when everybody is dressed up in green? Well, a blue and on blue represents Pharaoh's blue war crown attacked by the same blue war crown. That's a blue on blue. But only few among the top brass heads yet know this. Only the blue blooders, in fact. And there she was yesterday, June 23rd, 2015, in Germany. Wearing the blue war crown, coming to discuss the Russia crisis with her own krauts. Meaning war is imminent now, signaling the blue war crown to all Pharaoh's blue brothers. And do I have to tell you again what the checkerboard red and white flowers mean of Pharaoh's United Kingdom? You really want to explain me that to you? And then the red carpet, meaning setting foot on the territory of the Red House of Pertasser of Lower Egypt by the royal bloodline of the White House Perhet, symbolizing their welcome. When Roman armies under Pharaoh's command conquered northern Europe, installing Pharaoh's aristocracy all over, their code was to say, being blue-blooded, meaning to be part of the invading armies of the Blue War Crown, subjecting Europe and the Europeans. Of course, an important part of their signalling during their crusade over Europe were all the secret symbols carved in stone or at the front of their houses only. As I've shown you in my videos, The Pharaoh Show and Octagon, The Empire of Darkness. And most of that has now been replaced by telecommunications and therefore the blue crown of war in the Swisscom logo represents the war on Europe and in fact on all peoples of this planet. Except the Swiss, of course. And here it says the, their main center is in Warblauven, that's just around the corner from where we are here in Bern. And you see, it shows, you know, they want us to show like radio waves, but it isn't. It's the Freemason Vesica Peitsch is forming the oval, like in the Oval Office, where the, uh, the, the White House crown is of um, Upper Egypt. And this is, of course, this is a part of a chain, meaning, you know, the old rings, as in the uh, Guinness logo, meaning we form a chain and we're always together standing behind each other, you know, all for one and, and one for all, as in the Swiss Parliament. And you, stupid Europeans and stupid mankind, you will be always standing alone. The entire Tunisia attack is more related to Swiss Nazis, Swiss FIFA, Swiss Islamofascism, Swiss banks, Swiss chemical factories, 
Zurich, Switzerland and football than it is to Islam and Jihad, as it has come out now that the attacker was high on amphetamines from a product called phenethylin, also sold as Captagon, like Octagon, widely used in the Syrian war and apparently by ISIS, but highly forbidden by Al-Qaeda, as all drugs are forbidden in Islam. And here we can see again the link with Nazism, Octagon, and the Swiss mastermind behind Nazism, as all German soldiers were high on, on amphetamines during uh, using uh, pervitin, which they called Panzer Schokolade or, or tank, tank chocolate, which made them absolutely ruthless, merciless killers with their parasite army without proper logistics, bringing no food to the German soldiers. So they could hang on with pervitin and fetamins coming from the house of Pharaoh with the word per in pervitin in it of the per a. Per het or per tasser. And both the Nazis and ISIS were and are financed by the Swiss and their financial crime institutions. And again, instead of the jihadi Islam connection, we can see yet another link with football, as this Kaptagon product is being used by some professional soccer players. Or if you dig into it, at the end of the line it will probably appear that the producing factory being a daughter company of Swiss Novartis, the Swiss chemical giant, and probably biggest manufacturer in the world of psychopharmaca. So when Octagon dropped him off at the beach, the Tunisia beach killer I mean, they probably had him drink a soda with amphetamines in it without him knowing, saying the beach was full of British soldiers on a holiday from the war against Islam, which might have been partly true though. So here it says, Kaptagon, it's like Octagon, Kaptagon, it's the same. And every time, so here are those Kaptagon pills, or Kaptagon, if you would pronounce it in English, and here it says Captagon, the trademark from, for the synthetic stimulant phenethylin. You know, phenethylin, Captagon, pervitin, it's all the same. Just as the church killer a couple of weeks ago in America, he was on drugs as well apparently. Every time these guys who killed people randomly somewhere, every time they are on drugs. So, through the amphetamines, pervitin, captagon, phenethylin, in wars, we can see there's definitely a link between ISIS, the Nazis, and Islamofascism, through the same mastermind behind giving the soldiers the very same drug, which turns them into ruthless assassins, as the enemy within has made good experiences with the drug in World War II. The same techniques, the same modus operandi, by the same mastermind behind the screens. And here it says again there's the, um, the relation between phenethylin, it says, or captagon, phenethylin. Uh, it, was, it was used by uh, football players. Here it says, football players. So again, you know, the racial profiling on Tunisia's uh, soccer player, the national hero of Tunisia. Uh, the, uh, the attacker was a, a, a football fan. These, this drug was used by football, by soccer players. So again, there's a relation with football all the time. And this drug is forbidden by Al-Qaeda. So there's no relation with Islam. Jihad is really. Here it says, with the exception of Al Qaeda linked groups, which most mostly hold to a strict interpretation of Islamic law. So Al Qaeda and all these, they they are the ones, the real Muslims. They don't use these drugs, and of course Al Qaeda was 
was founded by by this uh, by by this I might say a saint. Bin Laden was a saint. He stopped the drug trafficking and drug drugs production of opium in Afghanistan. It dropped from 90% to zero, absolutely zero, and that went immediately up again in 2000 and. Uh, when the when the um, when the Americans came in after 9/11 in 2011, so there's a very big difference between Al Qaeda and ISIS. It's completely opposite. Al Qaeda does not like drugs. They forbid drugs, and that's a big difference. I think it's very important to understand who is who, of which I explain more. And these drugs, in fact, are part of the transhumanism agenda, reshaping man away from God's creation and therefore a devilish sin, and against the will of Allah, satanic techniques to make controllable assassins out of man and created by the forces of darkness from the Alps. I have to tell you, I'm, 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 I'm not a religious person. But um, this transhumanism is very, very evil. And these drugs were given to the ISIS uh, attackers. Um, it, it's very evil. So concerning the evil in it, I totally agree. And I show this picture, the glory of God, because the, I know that the real Muslims, the real Al-Qaeda guys, this is the thing they're fighting against. They don't use this sort of things. They hate this. So there's something else behind it. I'm telling you. The Nazis, Switzerland, Octagon, the Nazi Templars, Pharaoh. has nothing to do with Islam. And again, I'm not religious. I'm not a Muslim. I'm not a Christian. But it has nothing to do with people who believe in the creation or who believe in God. This is pure transhumanism. They want to replace mankind, the, the, the totality of nature, with Monsanto. Um, they, go, they want to replace it. And they create chaos through wars. And this is what's happening. And their base is Switzerland, whenever ever happens anything. They're so neutral, clean and innocent, where all the money is. So go and watch this video here on this channel here where I put all the facts together concerning the uh, Tunisia attacks in a two hour video, a document, documentary. So all evidence leads to Switzerland and their octagon Nazi Templars, the base of all evil. And as Swissy was so angry after the FIFA arrests ordered by the Americans on May 27th in Zurich, the very next day they threw the Tunisian national soccer hero to the ground. Also in Zurich, every time in Zurich, Hitler in Zurich, always in Zurich, Oprah Winfrey in Zurich, because Octagon's target from the beginning has been Tunisia. There's absolutely no proof at all that the Tunisia beach gunner was a jihadist ISIS or Al-Qaeda Muslim. But it is a fact that Saifedin Rezgui was a soccer fan. There's no jihadist goodbye video, no ISIS flags or Quran texts in his pockets, nothing whatsoever. It says he, was, he supported Real Madrid. And here too, Real Madrid. He liked break dancing. And so this, this was in the newspaper. He enjoyed all the trappings of Western society. He was a supporter of Real Madrid. So this guy, he got really very, very set, um, upset when the, uh, the Swiss Nazi police uh, racial profiled and humiliated the uh, Tunisian national soccer hero. Here's some pictures of him from the newspaper. And um, here it says Suisse. Well, that sounds like Swiss, you know, so the French word for Switzerland, what the Templars 
um, for Sir Disease, how they pronounce Switzerland in the beginning. And um, well, this is not bad. He wrote, The heroes are all in their graves, the real men in prisons, and the traitors in the palace. I agree with that. That's quite good, eh? And um, I'll come back to this later. This is completely <laughs> Photoshop. Here it says, it says, he was a break dancer and loved football. He loved football, it says in the newspaper. Well, maybe he had some contacts in the mosque. But the uh, but this the the humiliation in Switzerland only six days before, that was the thing that really um, it was really the last drop, it really made him do what he did, and he was a sweet boy when he was younger, so he was a sensitive guy. You know, he was sensitive, and he couldn't take it what happened. You know how how the Arab how an Arab was again humiliated again and again and again so this was really the, the swiss racial profiling of their tunisian her hero national hero uh, yasin chikahui that really um, tipped him over into what happened but of course switzerland is clean you know they never done something wrong you know Etc. Etc. There always there's no newspaper will ever ever write something bad about Switzerland. So even even if he was like you know influenced by um, uh, more uh, jihadists like Muslims, there was this thing that happened in Switzerland that made him made him tip over. That really flipped him out. It says, he d described him as good, good, good. He was never in problem with anybody else. So this was, it was a sensitive guy. He just couldn't take it anymore. What the Swiss he did. This is what I've been telling you all the time. Even the newspapers say it. He was a soccer fan. Wakey, wakey. And the Swiss knew exactly what they were doing. They knew the consequences. The Swiss banks and Octagon, they want war. Like the other Second World War and, and, and the First World War, they just want people to fight each other. And then blame it on the Muslims. And I say, no, 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 no. This is not okay. It's not the truth. Let's forget about the war on Islam propaganda and look at the facts only. It is for fact that he was a soccer fan, and it is no fact at all that he was an ISIS jihadi on the contrary. Here it says, again, he was a Real Madrid, that's the, the Spanish soccer team, the best one in, in Spain, a, a loving break dancer, who became brainwashed by extremism, or you might add, add and triggered by Switzerland, by the Swiss Octagon Nazis. And if I scroll it down here, look, there's some more. Even even the newspapers say it, you know. Here's again. He was a football loving young man. And um uh, sensitive guy he just got fed up with it all again a Muslim humiliated and again here again Real about he was posting about Real Madrid and the Tunisian national football team and who's the captain of the Tunisian national football team well that's Yassin Chikahoui that's the guy who got incredibly harsh humiliated by the swiss only six days before so this guy knew about it he probably even saw my video in which i talk about this and what happened and um the swiss triggered him believe me 
There's no proof that this guy was a uh, jihadi. Yes, again, he, lo he was a breakdancer and loved football. And he was good. Oh, there he is. It's the end of his football dreams. The Swiss triggered him. He knew about... He, he's, 11 million Tunisians knew what the Swiss had done to their national hero. And he, and he was part of that. So, investigate it, you know. The authorities should have investigated how many... All these, all these Tunisians knowing about this. I mean, we're living in a time, and especially the Muslims, it doesn't need very much, and the Swiss know it. Many Arabs have just had enough, and it, do, it doesn't need any, any more. It's all over the world, you know. There's, well. And in the minutes after the shooting, the media instantly present us a picture of the young man with assault rifles, which is either a photoshop with replica guns or a young kid posing with two replica AKs. How do I know this? Well, first of all, the light intensity on the guns is not the same lumen as on the kid, and he looks like he's had a couple of beers on a party and do what kids do all over the world and post a selfie and for an Arab kid more likely identifying himself with a Kalashnikov rifle. How do I know they're replica pellet airsoft guns? Well, first of all, at first sight, not even an expert can tell the difference from a real weapon. And in most countries, any 10-year-old can buy them legally in a shop. The AK on the left looks like an AK-47. And the, uh, the one on the right looks like a AK-74, the newer version with the, uh, the lighter uh, bullets. Like someone collecting different models. Neither one of the guns has a single scratch nor worn out marks, and not even the mags that are first to wear out. And the mags definitely look plastic, new and replica. Here, yeah, look at it. There's not a single scratch on the um, on the mags. It's it's all new. It's it's all replica. Th these are soft air guns. It's not real. This one too. There's there's not a scratch on it. You see, and the and the guy has more light than the light on the guns. You know, it it would be more shining here where the light uh, is is coming at uh, on the gun here. So, um, this part, you know, it's, it's not true. And this is the AK-47, the, uh, the 7.62 bullets, and this is the new lighter, um, almost like uh, 223 Remington, but not entirely the same. Uh, this has a huge stopping power, the AK-47, this has no stopping power. And I know how worn out jihadi guns look like, as I spent one year in Afghanistan in 1985. And I'm neither a Muslim nor a Russian. These guys know they throw their guns on the ground, lying in the dust and, and sand when praying. Don't clean their guns and on many occasions don't even carry them, but drag them behind. From what I saw, they were just so busy praying and drinking tea the whole day, they didn't even have the time to clean their guns. A prayer session was always prepared with grouping together and drinking tea. The same thing after the prayer, as an entire social event knitted around it five times a day, and incredibly time-consuming. I mean, I don't mind, basically. Anyone is free to do whatever he likes within the reasonable limits. But it's very hard to fight the Russian army with these guys. Oh, thank God the Russians were doing the same thing, praying to their vodka bottles. So, you can imagine what a jihadi gun looks like. And with Tunisia's strict gun laws, you will not be able to purchase a new Kalashnikov 
Only some old Qaddafi army used ones from over the nearest border with Libya. So the guns picture is a total hoax for the anti-Islamic agenda and wars against other peoples. So here you can see a picture of some guns who were confiscated this year by, uh, by uh, uh, from in Paris from a, um, a guy who apparently wanted to blow up a, uh, a church. Look, look at how rusty the magazines are. And, and this is not even in the desert, you know, or in Paris. Look at it, how rusty it is. And here, how it's worn out. Here, rusty. Here's rusty. The gun is rusty. These things rust, you know, if you don't oil them. Here, it's all metal shining through, you know. The other guns, they, they look new. It's plastic, you know. It, it doesn't shine. With all the light the guy is having on his face, and the guns don't shine like here. Look, here it shines. You see? These are metal mags, a real Kalashnikov mags. And they're rusty. I, you know, it, you can imagine the state of a mag in, 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 in Tunisia or in Afghanistan or you know, coming out of Libya's army and all, all the things this gun must have seen, you know. The rough life, so it's it's a comp the the picture is an entire complete hoax. I tell you, they're plastic guns. These are real guns. It's rusty and it's shiny, and it's worn out. The other ones, it's a hoax. I tell you, the Swiss Nazi Templar Octagon ha also has Muslim Arab members. Um, an alliance from the days of the Crusades, but also through the Swiss great eminences François Genou and Ahmed Huber al Swissri. Here you can see them. And the Al Taqwa Bank. And when the IRS in 2008 started to put pressure on the Swiss banks, Swissy applied for a banking license in Wahhabi Qatar, who said, Well, okay, but we want to have the world the World Soccer Championships 2022 in return to create a lot of black money selling alcohol to British hooligans in an alcohol restricted Muslim country like the Mafia making a fortune during the prohibition bootlegging in the 20s thus gaining more funds for Octagon financing ISIS who think they're fighting for Islam like the equally Swiss funded Nazis making the Germans think to fight for Germania. So here you can see them. I already made a video about them. And this guy, I met him once. He threatened me. He came, he, he forced himself into our house because of a newspaper article I wrote. And very dangerous man. He, he was together with uh, the first time with four other men, the second time with five other men. And the sixth guy was an Arab, and this I, I've I've been telling this since since uh, two th two thousand and one, and I recently found out that it was him. You know, well they're both dead, and you're personally personal friends of Adolf Hitler. So, you know, you see, the Al Taqwa Bank Bank is found is tied to Nazi supporters, so the Nazi the Nazi Templars of Octagon. They are in it. And the Al Taqwa Bank it was founded even in Switzerland. It says somewhere in the article. Wait a minute. So here's part of the article. It says the Al Taqwa Bank is founded in Switzerland. They are the ones behind it. And they that's why they triggered um the the beach shooter and uh, through the uh, the racial profiling of the national hero Yasin Chikahui who is of course innocent in all of this he has nothing to do with it but it's the swiss i tell you they're always behind it the swiss are all always in it they always are and making lots of money out of it believe me I already explained to you in some of my other videos how Swiss Nazis are involved in the Islamofascism at at the uh, at the highest levels, and you just saw it again. Uh, the 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 article I just showed you where not really Nazis behind the screens are 
behind it, you know, triggering, triggering uh, and, and financing it all, just as the Swiss Nazi police here. And this came out like uh, six days before the attacks. So you can imagine how this young guy and 11 million uh, Tunisians felt when they saw the hero, uh, national hero, like lying on the ground, like here. And well, the Swiss knew exactly what they uh, what the consequences would be. So when the Swiss Nazi police racially profiled the Tunisian soccer hero Yassin Chikahoui, the octagon just had to eavesdrop their antennas out in Tunisia and find themselves one of the very angry Tunisians because of their national hero, so humiliated in Zurich. And they found that unemployed, frustrated, angry, breakdancing Tunisian soccer fan to revenge his football hero, provided him the hardware and probably some money for his family and dropped him off at the local beach. Most likely promising him a getaway car for a safe exfiltration after the action and a comfortable future in, a wealth, in the wealthy Emirates. And this is why he's the attacker, he seeming, seemingly aimlessly headed for the streets as if he was waiting for something or someone instead of continually sweeping the beaches in order to make more victims. You can see him walking around like he's waiting for something, you know. Well, the getaway car, the promises didn't get fulfilled, you know. No getaway car. So he knew that was it. So May 27th, 2015, the US led arrests concerning the FIFA corruption, soccer corruption in Zurich, Switzerland, took place. And right the next day, Tunisia's soccer player Yassin Chikahoui got racially profiled by the Swiss Nazi police. Anyone thinks it's a coincidence? Well, let me tell you, there are no coincidences in Switzerland. And all this is related to 40 dead on an Arab beach and Swiss Nazi banking FIFA jihadi corruption in the base of all evil, Octagon, in the Alps. And now they can blame Islam and the Arabs for it demolish their tourist industry to create more jobless, desperate potential fighters for the political agenda, with Swiss banks getting filthy rich and Octogon consolidating their total control, worldwide blue army to control humanity. Recently it showed in the newspapers how the Swiss Nazi people are spreading fear for other races and other people, spreading hatred and ethnophobia by integrating the Native American First Nations into their Swiss racist hate campaigns by depicting caricatures of stereotype Indians with degrading texts like the Indians couldn't stop the immigration, today they live in reserves. Now, wait a minute, weren't the immigrants the Swiss themselves, with currently one million Swiss Americans in the USA? With Swiss General Custer called the Squaw Killer, and Swissy himself squeezing the First Nations into reserves? This is what a bunch of evil liars the Swiss are, twisting the truth for our eyes, being the disinfo agents, just as Swissy disinfo and their evil Nazi tongues spread their neutrality swindle and that nobody got hurt in the concentration camps with Swissy lie that gas chambers never existed in the extermination camps. And as usual, Swissy initiates the lie. Then Austrian and German Nazis copycat, as doing so with this scandalous anti-Native American propaganda, with Swissy perpetrator as usual and always slipping into the victim's role after. While it was them in the first place, chasing and terrorizing the Indians. Oh, what a bunch of dumb liars. This is the sick Swiss direct democracy.
or should I say direct idiocracy. You can see the internet is full of it, you know. If you put this sentence here, die Indianer konnten die Einwanderung nicht stoppen, heute leben sie in Reservaten. Yeah? The Indians couldn't stop the immigration, so today they live in reserves. So if, they, if you punch this in the internet, it, it pops out, you know. Page after page after page. And this is by the Swiss Nazis. Initiated by the Swiss Nazis, taken over by the German and the Austrian Nazis. And nobody does a thing against it, you know. They just go on and go on and go on. Just stalling time, lying to uh, other countries and say, yeah, we Swiss are neutral. Yes, we Swiss authorities, we do something against it. And no, they're never going to do something against it. And it goes on and it goes on, you know. It's like, a, um, it's like an avalanche, you know. Very dangerous. Very, very dangerous. Stop the Swiss Nazi people. So here you can read the entire article. Excuse Google for the translation, but at least it's something. So here in the beginning, uh, you, can, uh, you can read it, you know, the Indians... The Indians couldn't stop the immigration. Today they live in reserves. <laughs> and the immigration, <laughs> that was the Swiss and the Germans and the Austrians who are now using it, you know. <laughs> this is idio Nazi idiocracy. The Nazis have always been a bunch of liars and it's all initiated from Switzerland. Which it even says here in the article as well, you know. Um, yeah, I'll look it up for you. So now you can see that in the article they're doing it all. The Swiss started, and now they're doing it everywhere in Tessin, in Lugano. They're doing it in uh, here, the German speaking countries everywhere. A right wing nationalist, uh, Austrian Freedom Party, FPÖ, NPD. The Swiss started, it's the same with those, you know, white, black sheep being kicked by, uh, by three white sheep. And it's been taken over, all over, into Russia, everywhere. And nobody's doing a thing, you know. Here it says it's good as well, you know. And, um, It says one more time here by the NPD, we know that the Indian people couldn't stop the immigrants. <laughs> well, the immigrants were Germans. Uh, it, it was them, it was the NPD. Uh, so now they live in reserv well, reserves, they mean res reservations. Well, it's a Google translation. We know that the Indian people couldn't stop the immigrants, now they live in reserves. That's the text we just saw with the um, with the stereotype um, Indian, you know, so that before you know they they kill the Indians and now they use the Indians for their own I don't know what you know. This is very dangerous. It, it, it always comes from Switzerland. Every time they start it, they finance Hitler, and the others follow up and copycat the Nazi stuff and then we we have to pay for it eh? yeah, I put this in the uh, in the Google translator yeah, it's fabulous even the Swiss Patriots fascists and Nazis I can run through the Google translator you see the Swiss cross here it says Patriot with the pyramid you know here Swiss cross why well, all the their coats of arms, you know, of the Swiss mercenaries. It says the Indians couldn't stop the immigrants. They now live in reserves. Um, it's all over. Now they, now, yeah, there they come again, all the Indians. Yeah, Patriots, Swiss Patriots. You can buy a pin, you know, S stick it on your breast. The Swiss flowers, the uh, as the Nazis used. Well, oh, isn't it charming? It's all over. The Nazis are using the Indians. You know, 
the Indians are all wasted. You know, they're like gone. And now the the white the whiteies they call themselves. Look at them. They replaced the Indians. So now they call them the white Indians. The Swiss are the white Indians. Well, what do you know? <laughs> they feel they they feel themselves as white Indians. Well. Well, I told you about the, you know, how they do it with the white nigger. Excuse my expression. You know, they, they, uh, as they did with the, um, uh, the uh, Korean uh, dictator. You know, he's a Swiss inside eating cheese, and uh, outside he's Korean. You know, uh, he's a, he's a white Korean, and they do the same with Africans. And uh, now, well, now I just saw they do it with Indians too, white Indians. The Chinese call them bananas, you know, white inside and yellow outside. Oh man, it is, it is, it's disgusting, really. I mean, take care, folks. It's, it's, nobody's doing something. Be aware, my Indian brothers, my Native American brothers, they, they even, the Swissy even has a, uh, a website called White Indians. They've replaced you. They are amongst you, like everywhere else. It says CH. This is in Switzerland. CH means Confederatia Helvetia. It's, it's, it's Swiss. There's even an address. I, I didn't show it now, but uh, there's everything. An address, a telephone number. Be aware, my Native American brothers, homie takuyasim.